If you've been around from the beginning, you know I've been working towards making over my house to turn it into a home. I've transformed several spaces in this house so far and I can't wait to continue to share this journey with y'all. back to the channel in this week's video I'm actually going to be starting a new series of making over my living room in this part of making over the living room I'm going to be getting rid of all of this that's here under our TV I'm building a custom entertainment cabinet center so I'm gonna be building custom cabinets all through the bottom um, I have in mind to do four well two cabinets here with like four doors and then on the sides I want those to be drawers and then over top on the sides of the tv i want shelves so this is going to be a pretty big project so i'm going to extend it over a few videos instead of just one huge video once i'm done building this then we're going to take it over to the actual living room space and make over everything that's in it but yeah other than that um let's go ahead and get started before we get started, I want to thank Go Cashback for sponsoring today's video. Go Cashback is the fastest growing cashback website. You can find stores like Walgreens, Walmart, Sephora, to name a few. Go Cashback is super easy to use. You simply sign up through their website, gocashback.com, and enter an email address and password to create an account. From there, you can browse all of the stores available, shop by clicking the Shop Now button, and earn cash back that you can request as payment via check. PayPal, or direct deposit. They even offer a Google extension that you can download straight to your computer so that you don't miss out on earning cash back. It automatically activates cash back earnings without you even realizing it. Go cash back offers great deals like discounts in addition to their cash back earnings. So for example, you can see here finish line has a discount of 20% off plus an additional 6% cash back for ultimate savings. Go cash back is offering my viewers an $8 registration bonus just for simply signing up. And all you have to do is use the link down in the description. They are also offering offline cash back for new users who download the Go cash back app at 100% for Starbucks, Whole Foods, and more. If you already shop online, again, this is just a way for you to be able to save more money and earn cash back simply by shopping through their website. Thank you again for Go Cash Back for sponsoring today's video. The first step to any makeover is to clear out the space you are going to be working on. Next is to get my overall dimensions of the working space so I can determine all of the cuts and measurements I'll need to create the built-ins. At this point, I also went ahead and removed all of the baseboards. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside? It really makes me wonder. This is what the clean space looks like. There are many options for plywood. When it comes to cabinets, the most common are usually made of birch, maple, or oak. I chose to go with sanded plywood though this time around because we all know the cost of wood is extremely high right now still so i wanted to save as much money as possible i plan on building a total of three carcasses for the base cabinets of the built-ins the main carcass will have four doors and then each carcass on the sides will have drawers i am starting off by ripping down my plywood that the width of the main base cabinet i decided on 20 inches for the depth 
35 inches for the height, and a total of 74 inches for the length. So in total, I have three pieces that measured 20 by 35 for my sides and the middle, and two pieces that measured 20 inches by 35 and 7 eighths. Remember that your overall dimensions will always be dependent on subtracting the material width. For example, I am building my main carcass to look like this, so I have to take into account that the thickness of three of these boards in order to determine the length of the two bottom boards. In my case, the overall dimensions is 74 inches in length, so 74 inches minus two and a quarter for the total width of each board equals 71 and three quarter inches. Then I'll take 71 and three quarters and divide it by two to get 35 and 7 eighths. And that's how long each of these two boards should be. Once all of my cuts were made, I moved on to switching out my blade to a dado stacked blade. I used two blade stacks to create a one quarter inch dado. I used a scrap piece of 2x4 to determine the depth I wanted. I ran all of these boards through on the back side of them so I could later insert a quarter inch plywood for the backing since they were all connected. The middle board did need a dado on both sides since it'll be in between. I will be joining them using pocket holes because you guys know I love using them because they're so easy to create and use. I made sure to align my dados I created and then secured the boards with some wood glue and pocket hole screws. I found these corner clamps off of Amazon that I thought would be very helpful, so if you struggle with making sure you get everything squared, you would definitely benefit from these. I ripped down two one quarter inch boards to add to the back. I intentionally left three quarters of an inch of space on the back so that I could add my support boards. So I cut down four inch strips for my plywood, created pocket holes on each end and added it to the carcass. The ones on the back will help to support for attaching them to the wall and the top ones will help for securing a countertop onto them.
So this is probably gonna be the actual height once I add the base to the bottom. I like to build the bases separately just because I feel like it's easier that way. Um, I also have a lot of spare two by fours that I need to get rid of. So I figured that was a great way to get rid of those. Um, but yeah, this is looking pretty good. Um, hey, so. I'm going to take it off of these rollies because clearly that's dangerous. A ver, bájate, baby, un segundo. Gracias. Now that the carcass was built, I moved on to ripping down the boards I needed for my other two cabinets. I followed the exact same process of adding pocket holes to the bottom boards so I could attach the sides and secure them with wood glue and pocket hole screws. Since I will be building drawers for these cabinets, I did not need to add any dados because I will not be adding a back panel. You could if you wanted to, but I figured since it's not going to be exposed and it will never be seen, I wanted to save as much money as possible. But I did add supports to the top and the back top and bottom. Once I was done building those, I moved on to measuring and cutting down scrap 2x4s and even made a few from scrap 2x6s to build out the bases. You could totally cut out the toe kicks on the plywood that you cut, but I'm still working on cutting down all of my scrap pile, so I figured that would be a good way to do so. I added pocket holes to the top and bottom of the inside boards and then attached them. I did not use wood glue, just pocket hole screws. Typically toe kicks measure 3 inches in depth and 4 inches tall. The length cut would be the exact same measurement, but the width I deducted 3 inches for the width of the 2x4s on each side and an additional 3 inches for the 3 inch toe kick clearance I needed.
That is how I build my base cabinets. It seems a lot more intimidating than it actually is, and if you've been thinking about building cabinets, give it a shot. This is what I have so far. Be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because once I am done with the built-ins, I'm going to be giving y'all a final living room makeover reveal. I love y'all, be kind, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!